as it turned out I got a little sidetracked from making my video on Mark McMurtry which turned out to be a rather good opportunity. It was a good opportunity because it not only enabled me to have a conversation that enriched my knowledge of things and but by the time I did come back I found that I had a comment on a previous video at the channel and I looked at it and who should it be from but Benyini Nyinini aka Gunnam aka Mark McMurtry so what did Gunnam Beergut say? Because we all know that Benyini Nanyini is you, Gunnam. You know, there's no point in even wording it to make it sound like, you know, somebody else, you're talking on somebody else's behalf. I do commend you for the effort that you have put into the structure of sentences and paragraphs here. But I'd like to point out a few little flaws. All right. She needs a capital letter. This has got, uh, the bracket doesn't belong there. And your names are not consistent. Uh, if this is meant to be Lee for someone as in a person's name, it's usually E before I in those circumstances. Uh, could be getting it that wrong, but um, Crittle or Crystal Math, uh, can you get the names consistent? You've done a really good job. You've formulated whole sentences, even completed thoughts. Oh, and you put the comma in the wrong place there. So that's it for your marking of your corrections and your punctuation and your diction. Now shall we address the very first most important thing that you're going to bring up. This very pertinent comeback and important information to Crittle Meth, is just a bitter old fool who has nothing better to do with her time as if she did, she would obviously be doing it. Well, that is just so original, Gunnam. Seriously, can any of you actually start a thought off without going, oh, They've clearly got nothing better to do. They're picking on me for no reason at all and I can't understand it. Oh, seriously. You know, why do you even ask such a stupid question? Clearly, you are the better thing I've got to do right now. Okay? And when I'm done with you, that's when you'll be looking at the inside of a cell. Okay? Just so you know. So... Before we do get on to uh, the businesses that Mark McMurtry is involved in that we can already find. Alright, so I think I'm supposed to be crittle meth. I'm not sure. I, I'm the bitter old fool. <laughs> and now I'm supposed to be friends with the lady who caused all the legal and financial nightmares. Alright, is he calling Adrian Brannock a lady? Because as far as I'm aware... It was him, his uh, lack of bookkeeping, his lack of transparency, uh, and he was also having other legal and financial nightmares of his own that I'm sure a lot of the money that went out of the community went to help with his own personal problems. So I don't know who the lady who caused all the legal and financial nightmares are here that he refers to that I'm supposed to be friends with. But the only person I can actually think of is this little lady, lady Adrian Brannock. Because he's the one that's caused all the legal and financial nightmares. He's filled up his pockets, siphoned them out, so he has with all his mates, and then turned around when the piggy bank is empty and said, they stole it over there. Oh, come on. Yeah, sure. So all these financial nightmares, which occurred under her friend's ownership of land bought by the company, this old fool is trying to slate as responsible 
for said loss and damage to the original investors. All right, for a start, um, Gunnam, you need to send me your email address so I can loop you in with the activities that your other mates have been looped in, like AB, Derek, Zilman, Rich Mote, Pete Evans, Max Egan, Steve Starts, uh, Art Worrell, uh, one, one's Rabi, and uh, the ATO. Okay? These have all been partied, and Adrian Brannock's directorship of any company and its involvement in the project is actually discussed in those emails and how he transferred his shares into his wife's name. It can be proven, um, what was it, six days before his final bankruptcy hearing. He concealed shareholdings and transferred them so as to avoid it. And that's the Nyepi company. Uh, isn't it funny how all these nip 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 sounds, these benyinyinyinyi and nyepi and it's like, that's all folks, Bugs Bunny. Do we get that feeling that these people are taking the piss out of us? Because, you know, maybe that's why I take the piss out of them. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to try and deal with these very important issues that this idiot's raised um, before I get into the companies that he's associated with that are easily traceable. And I'll probably find more when I get paid searching done. So she has no involvement and he will in no way be impacted by the development as it, also I'm not crittle meth anymore, I'm it, claims to live in Hobart. If that is akin to everything she says, then she lives in New York. Well, I tell you what, that is just the best example of logic I've ever seen. I mean, you know, to say that, well, it claims to live in Hobart and then go, well, if that is akin to everything else she says, then she lives in New York. I mean, what point are you actually trying to make there, gun and beer gutty? Uh, I don't understand. Huh? Maybe I'm a bit thick because it's all that smog in New York is fogging my brains. Hey, I'm going to stand out in New York with this Aussie accent, eh? <laughs> Now, let's deal with the fact of Adrian Brannock. Now, the only thing he says here is the only thing he can actually state that is actually true. He can't say Adrian Brannock is not a bankrupt. Adrian Brannock did not try and hide shares in his wife's name so that it looks like he's got no involvement in the project. Yeah. So, Adrian Brannock is not a director of any company. No, as can be easily shown through, I could bring it up right now and show you, but I won't. I've got other stuff to show. Uh, he transferred the shares. He's going to court. He knows he's going to be made bankrupt. He doesn't want them to get the shares of Nyepi because that's the company that has the shareholdings in the other companies that feed the profits back to Adrian and Christy Brannock. Right? And this um, thinking that transferring it into your wife's name, oh, Adrian Brannock, did you not know that this was actually something that they shined a light on after Bondi tried doing it by sticking it in his family's name? They don't like that and they actually get quite nasty about you trying to do it. And now they actually know you've tried to do it. It's been put to the people that are supposed to deal with it to see whether they do. Anyway, so what is truly sad is that Crystal Meth, <laughs> what is she doing to actually improve this world? She would have to admit that being an acidic, narcissistic troll is about the extent of her credentials. Well, I wouldn't say it's the extent of them, but I'd actually say it's one of my credentials. I'm actually quite good at being an 
acidic, narcissistic troll with people like Max Egan. He doesn't appreciate me. Neither does Bitchoot. Uh, they uh, shut down my channels. You know, so I suppose that in that respect, he might actually have some validity in saying I'm an acidic, narcissistic troll. Because from the perspective of some people, that's exactly what they would see me as. And I've got no problem with that. Hey, there's a reason that I'm that way with them. And if their opinion mattered to me, I would put it a lot more delicately than what I do. Oh, maybe not. I've always been sort of uh, a bit abrupt for a lot of people. But he made that comment. And then he made this other one. Where um, I think that... Oh, yes, I responded back to the... Because Banyuni is the wind that blows through here. That That's in the Nightcap on Minjimbul documentary where he talks about that the one side of Sphinx Rock is called Banyuni and uh, he named himself after that. And that's also the Mount Burrell fruit and veg shop that Mark McMurtry and his wife, well, I'm still assuming they still have a useless lease on. But anyway... This comment here that he, he said, like you can read the comment for yourself. It's actually attached to the um, one where I talked about failed paleo Pete. He's attached it to a comment. And this doesn't make sense to anything that he's actually said in comments. So I have no idea what he's talking about. But... Um, <sighs> You know, I pretty much told him to, to piss off. You know, he is a fake. You know, this OSTF that he's set up, you, you're so disrespectful for everything that you've said and tried to legitimise that you're acting on behalf of the Aboriginal communities and the legitimate elders of areas. You don't, and you know that. And you're causing division in the Aboriginal community because you got this stupid little spiel that you've repeated just like Max Egan you've repeated it for the last 10 20 years seriously you could I swear you'd probably talk it in your sleep you're so used to saying it and then you have all these people around you that go oh wow that sounds so intelligent he must be really smart no a smart man can actually change the narrative they haven't changed Max Egan, Gunham. And let's look at the narrative that Gunham has been running. Hey, get him. The wind that blows through here, let's see how much he's been blowing. So there's some people, especially like with <laughs> Gunham Beer Gut, that uh, he's just had such uh, a history there's just so much that you could um, look at. But all of these cases here are different court cases that he's taken on over these sovereignty things that he's tried to do. And what he's actually tried to do is actually caused harm to the Aboriginal community. And yet he claims to be doing it for the benefit of them. So um, the associations that Mark McMurtry has had with the original Sovereign, Sovereign Tribal Federation. I've got lots of shortcuts here. Uh, I just wanted to give you a bit of an idea about all the different things that you can find on him. Like Mark McMurtry's got a family trust here. Oh, my mouse won't work. Um, and ultimately, as soon as I see trustee for a family thing like that, what I see is, a, especially when I know it's for someone like Mark McMurtry or Derek Zillman or something like that, I will look at that and think, right, so you've set up this family discretionary trust fund or investment discretionary fund so that pretty much no one can see what's going on behind it. That's a red flag for me to begin with. Because generally speaking, trustees were only ever used under certain circumstances where you'd have power of attorney appointed where someone did need to, or 
bankruptcies, liquidation, or in the example of someone has died and it becomes a deceased estate. So basically the circumstance of the usage of the trust has now gone to being a mainstream uh, commercial commodity to hide your activities in. So yes, now as soon as I see a trust, it's a red flag for me. And whoever's putting the trust in their name, to me is indicating that they want to keep certain things confidential, discreet, and unknown from discovery from anybody. But that's just those um, shortcuts that he's got lots of different associations. I wanted to get into the company aspect of it because I already have, uh, I've got extracts already that for Yudaki Development, First in Time, Yudaki Capital, and I don't need one for Australia Pacific Life Sciences because Mark McMurtry on LinkedIn says he's the director and COO. I don't know what that title's chief office holder or something like that. I don't know. He's making up the titles of self-importance, so he can say. So by his own statement, Australia Pacific Life Sciences his director and COO. I've got Loved Ones Tribe on here. I'll be uh, searching that tomorrow to see what I can find on that and who's actually behind that. But I've kind of got a feeling considering that uh, everything else that uh, Mark McMurtry is doing is in association with um, the tribal aspect. Like this Yadaki Developments. Before I actually got the uh, searches for Yudaki, I had already looked them up and knew that they would be associated simply because of the five Yudaki principles that are advertised in the Nightcap on Minja book. Any names that they refer to are names that they're likely to use in association with setting up companies associated with it. So of course the Yudaki principles that the communities set up on it would stand a reason that uh, the, there would be Yadaki companies, and sure enough, there was. Then I was very lucky enough to actually receive um, paid searches that had actually gone behind that paywall and found out who's who. And in looking at that information, both of these were done in 2020. Now. Months have lapsed, I've, I've checked, there are no documents lodged. So the current position of the ownership of these companies is, um, except for NCV Enterprises, which I will check and verify in future videos, because as I said here, it's not current as more documents filed, changed to principal place of business, office holder, member name or address, blah, blah. So the known ones here, will have changed after the date of um, the search, which was only six months ago. But uh, when you look at the activities, it doesn't matter for the activities that happened in a company in 2015, you cannot hold the current directors responsible for their actions. It is actually those ones that are held responsible and brought in because that company was com currently under their control and ownership. So uh, I'm not particularly worried about the change in it because here we've got NCV Enterprises is the company that is named by uh, Planet Consulting as being the umbrella that all the properties are bought under to make the whole nightcap on Minjimble development. So NCV Enterprises is the umbrella and Cherie Frances Stokes who's been involved with it right from the word go and she's also involved with the Mount Burrell commercial. Uh, I've already explained to her. She was listed as sole director and secretary. Now shareholders, the there's one 
1,090 total shares that were split up, 1,000 shares to Yodaki Capital, 45 shares jointly owned by Derek and Michelle Zillman, and 45 shares by Nyepi. Now, Nyepi, as I explained just before, is Christy Ann Brannock's company after her husband, Adrian Brannock, transferred those shares into her name to avoid having them seized in bankruptcy. So wherever you see Nyepi, that's Adrian Brannock, okay? And that's just one of his um, shareholdings that he's moved around to avoid detection. So let's have a look at Yodaki Capital, who is the majority shareholder. So Yodaki Capital... Mark McMurtry, aka Gun and Beer Gut, is director. Derek Zillman is director secretary. And this is why I've brought Derek Zillman in because Derek Zillman now, on the uh, paper side of it and the associated side of it, is becoming a very important member of the nightcap on Minjimbul. And probably for the main reason that. Uh, if he is the one that is offering vendor finance, in essence, he is the guy that you become indebted through. If you cannot get ordinary financing, which no reputable place is going to give you that money, you are going to end up doing vendor financing. And it will be Capital Z, uh, Derek Zillman's company, that will negotiate that for you. And in that sense, uh, you could also end up owing money for that vendor financing as well as other things that may go wrong within this uh, setup. Hmm. Set up in so many ways for people to fall. Not a few, they're at the top ready to rake it all in. So Yudaki Capital, that is the controlling interest of NCV, is Derek Zillman, um, which I'm assuming, I and I will confirm this tomorrow with uh, searches, Zillman nominees, and it stands to reason. I mean, Zillman, Zillman, good chance that he's got something to do with it. And Nyepi, <laughs> and first in time. Now, they've all got a third share each. So the major shareholders the major shareholder in NCV Enterprises, the umbrella over the nightcap on Minjimbul, is Yudaki Capital. And behind that is Derek Zillman, Adrian Brannock, and Mark McMurtry. And yes, we do know this is Mark McMurtry because the search done on the 16th of June this year showed that Mark McMurtry is the sole director, secretary, and shareholder of 100 shares for first in time. So as I said, the controlling company, the controlling people are Derek Zillman, Mark McMurtry and Adrian Brannock. Then we look at another company, Yodaki Development, who has also got Mark McMurtry and Derek Zillman in the same capacities as that as Yudaki Capital. And if you notice, registered on the very same day, 21st of May. So they're pretty much the same people setting up the same stuff, just different companies set up because this development company over here is to deal with the development aspect of it. And this capital one, I dare say, would be to take in the funds of investors and also uh, create contracts for vendor financing. And anyone doing vendor financing should actually, I haven't got into it yet, but there is um, very grave concern over one member company lending money to a London Horizons at a time when they are actually supposedly in liquidation already and a receiver manager appointed. But the member company 
has no justification for saying that it actually should have this money to lend back to the same to another member company they're essentially lending money to themselves then you go and look at Wollumbin Horizons where if this mortgage had actually been legitimately lodged there would be a notice of charge lodged with ATSIC uh, with the liquidator as well so because any business a proprietary limited company that borrows money that has any kind of a charge registered against it it has to be lodged as a document at corporate affairs uh, uh, there is no charge for this loan agreement between um, Mount Warning Eco Village to lend the money to Wollumbin Horizons that they are the same thing how does one company have the ability to lend all this money to the other company where did it get the money from to lend it that's one of those little curious things I will investigate a lot more and explain a lot more now I've probably acted on for a fair bit now and this video is already getting um, fairly long so I might uh, wind it up a bit and leave it there I just wanted to introduce Mark McMurtry Derek Zillman uh, will be taking a bit more look at other players in the game as I get more information and getting behind that paywall and to do these company searches even to look at the uh, lodge documents see this is my area of expertise I used to sit in corporate affairs going through a whole list of companies that I had to check out and I had to check each one of them out some of them were really boring you'd open them up there's two pieces of paper there's not much to write other ones you would open them up and boy what a story and it was my job to go through each and every document and ascertain that this person was in a not only legally viable position financially but also was uh, a legally accountable entity so that was my responsibility and role so when I look at um, lodge document documents I'm very uh, easily able to read how they should work and in fact when I was looking at lodge documents the other day I noticed only one company or oh, two companies I've actually come across there's actually an ad annual return lodged see the normal thing for any trading company that's got assets capital and something to justify you know money existence it, uh, has a reason to put in an annual return a company that exists for a long period of time and does not lodge an annual return uh, is indicating they have no assets no business or no capital because what are you existing as you are not trading because to be trading you need to put in an annual return so that's another thing too in that reading the documents it's not only a matter of what is there but what isn't and the consistency is the lack of annual returns the lack of evidence that these businesses have actually got any assets or have been conducting any business at all and by that definition you could say it's a shell company used to funnel money backwards and forwards through so I'm gonna leave it at that and I'll get more into it next time <laughs> catch you next time